Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic VW, and welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to my garage and goose, my 1956 Owen right top. And what are we doing? What are we doing? We are working on that EFI turbo build, guys, and we gotta get the transmission in before we can move on any further, and that's what we're doing. Did you know that there is some special stuff you gotta do for the Berg 5-speed clearancing issues? Well, there is, and we're gonna talk about that right after this intro, guys, so see you in a second with some great stuff. All right, guys, we're sitting down here with the Berg 5-speed, and it's time to talk about some of the details because there's a lot of interest, a lot of uh, information out there, and I spent, oh gosh, I spent probably days in the forums researching the, uh, the nose cone for the end of this, and then came across Dave Foltz from another Facebook friend of mine that he has come up with a design that allows you to go ahead and relocate the nose cone down just enough for the early chassis because there's a difference between the early chassis, like, my 56 oval window and the later model and what you have to do. So let me kind of show you underneath the car real quick and then we'll get over to the five speed. Do, 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 do. All right, guys, here we are underneath Goose. And you can kind of see that there's a window there and that's part of what needs to be clearance for the, uh, the nose cone because the way that five speed works actually extends past where the stock one would be. Right here in the center where the uh, input shaft goes into, I need to go ahead and open that up some, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that with some hole saws. And if you get the hole saw that actually fits the hole, you can go ahead and put a, a larger one outside and it'll be kind of like a perfect fit. And uh, I think it'll look better, a lot cleaner of a cut when I do that. Also over here in the torsion housing, there has to be some clearancing as well. You can see I've got my Berg five-speed mount, the mid-mount down the ground over here, just chilling out. That's going to be waiting for the new nose cone to get here before I can kind of clean up the frame horns uh, and weld in the brackets because I want to make sure that everything fits the way it's supposed to fit. And you, you got to wait until you got the, the nose cone here and know what I have to clearance. So what are we working on today? What are we working on today? Well, we gotta go ahead and remove these spring plates because from uh, Charles Adam Works sent me some uh, some extra pieces to go ahead or some new pieces, a new end piece to go ahead and uh, help out with strength with those. And I'll show that to you guys a little bit later, but let's talk about the, uh, the Berg, the Berg five speed and what we got going on over here. Right here, these keys get all replaced. These hardened keys get replaced. This is the uh, business end, guys. This is where all the fun stuff happens on the uh, five-speed. I'm going to be putting the cover back on here in a little bit, too, just to keep crap out of there. But uh, the keys get replaced. My guess is, like, these keys are welded on here. The heads of these things are welded on here, and they probably get clocked down a little bit to allow for the uh, the hockey stick that sticks in here. This, uh, this hockey stick right here that sticks inside of here to come through and pull out all of the gears, right? So 
when you're looking at the end cone, you kind of see how the input shaft where the hockey stick comes through is sitting there. Well, it's actually going to move down about an inch farther down to allow for a better alignment with your uh, shift rod. And yeah, man, anything that can help out with the install or make it a better install. But uh, I want to kind of go ahead and do things better if I can. So that kit costs about 650 bucks and it's about a three, four, four week wait still on that coming in from uh, Dave Foltz up there in Ontario, Canada. So it's time to get to work, guys. I got some uh, side plates to remove. I'll come back in a little bit and we'll talk about exactly what's going on with that and what is changing. Sound good? See you in a minute. side out all set you can see that I had to kind of move the fender off here to do that let me take you up to the bench and show you what the changes are gonna be okay guys we're at the bench now I'm gonna talk about some of the changes that have been made to the Adam works line and they're all really cool things the first thing that I want to talk about is the new spacers originally um, Charles over there and the Adam works guys were going with just some uh, some washers and this is still like the basic option i'm sure or maybe they have switched to where it's now the new spacer this is pretty cool adds a lot of extra strength to the way that it sets up on the bottom of the actual cover so that's really cool the new cover if you look at these two covers the new spring plate cover one is now recessed which adds extra strength and the bolts that hold in the cover are also recessed so that's pretty sweet so yeah so both of these uh changes actually add a lot of strength which is super sweet this is again guys the bearing there's a bearing inside of here that helps everything move nice and uh free when it comes to the spring plate and the torsion uh torsion spring inside of there so before this thing would sit on top of here like this right and you could kind of freewheel it right and with the holes see how these holes on here they're not recessed, so your bolt would sit on top like a washer. And here's the bolt. Here's the washer. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Here's the washer. And they would sit on top just like that. And this one, you can see this washer. I notched it. And the reason why I notched that washer was because over here on this side, it needed to be notched so it wouldn't uh, hit the side of the plate. Well, over there, they like to innovate at Adam Works, so they went ahead and changed things around. The new plate design this actually sits inside of the housing that is super cool and your bolts no washers anymore it sits in the recessed as well adds strengths pretty cool stuff from kinetitech and the atomworks line thanks a lot charles i appreciate the upgrade buddy well guys it is the next day and i went ahead and got both of the spring plates removed i gotta sit up here on the bench let me show you real quick yeah they're all done. They're all set up now with the the recessed plates on both of them, ready to go back in. Sitting here, going to be waiting for a little bit because I kind of like the extra room that I have, not having them in here. I also prepped the location where I should be welding in my brackets, the Berg brackets for the uh, Berg bin mount on both sides. Here's the other side. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit more. I use masking tape to kind of block off the area that I'm uh, sanding down 
and that glue on there sometimes gets pulled over which comes off pretty easy with a little bit of carb cleaner or something so there's the Berg mid mount sitting right there like I told you guys I'm not gonna go ahead and weld anything in until I get the new nose cone installed and everything mocked up in position because it makes no sense to go weld stuff in and then have to cut it out to re-weld it if it's not where it needs to be what else is going on hold on a second let me get up and I'll let you know slow down door inside here I went ahead and mocked up the new battery hold it fits perfectly in this area right here to, for my Optima battery uh, I have that outside I'm gonna put about three coats of primer on it and then probably three coats of gloss black and that should be good to go uh, I gotta finish taking out all this insulation inside of here clean up the uh, back area because this is just like a primer that's on here and I want to go ahead and hit that with some gloss black so I might do that too but uh, probably end up just getting all this rest of this out of here and out of the way and start working on my fuel lines my custom fuel line setup that's gonna be coming in from the back side like the back side over over there and then over on that side yeah that's gonna be in the next video guys not in today's video but let me show you that battery box real quick but hold on one second what about that hole Jay that hole that hole back there All right, we gotta lower this baby down some so we can get the transmission in a better position and get her back on the jack stands so that we're not trying to kill ourselves. So let's drop her down, guys, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. There she goes. Bum down. Bum down. We gotta do some interesting. Whoa. Little side note, folks. See if I can just kick you over a little bit. Here's where I need it. I'm gonna get the. Gotta drop it down a little bit more. Probably the jack stand if I can bring up the transmission. It's acting like a super tight fit, man. Super tight fit on bird Leave it there now. All right, so after about uh, an hour and a half, almost two hours of trying to do this the polite and gentle way, it's time to do this the other way. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to do it along the seam line, so hopefully we don't have too much uh, extra, extra to worry about. <laughs> That was the sound I was looking for. Yeah. It's all around just excitement. Uh, Chills, thrills, and excitement over here at JW Classic VW. Ugh. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Ugh. Hey, I can see everything. I'm gonna grab a file real quick and kind of clean up these edges a little bit. That's about to break off anyway. We'll break it off. How about that, Jay? <laughs> We have a hole! <laughs> uh, please send all hate mail and or suggestions to my uh, email address and or you can mail me hate mail if you would like to. I take either or. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you look at this thing, the seam, there's a seam in here that this is a welded in panel anyhow. So don't freak out. Berg 5 speed, all cleaned up, ready to go. Yep, we'll talk about that in one second. Yep, here is my new battery box, battery hold down. Pretty nice. This is just the first coat of primer on here. A couple more coats of primer, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a, a few coats of gloss black, and we should be good to go. Berg 5 speed, I took it this morning to the car wash cleaned it all off you can see that I had the side covers all taped up so I can't get anything in there also drain the rest of the oil out of here as well the drive shafts are up here and I want to go ahead and set you guys up in the the uh, tripod and show you kind of what's going on with these cold molly race drive shafts all 
right, here we go, guys. So you can see that they're marked, for one, because you want to pay attention to which side has which drive shaft on it. This is the driver's side and the passenger side. One of the things I want to show you guys is some of the beating that this sucker took. Wow. You guys see that? It's a little heavy. I just bring you in a little closer. Right there. You kind of see how it's got some material on there and what it looks like to me is that it was actually eating up these little keys that go in, in the side gears the side gears down here there's little keys inside of here they're called fulcrum plates these fulcrum plates sit inside of the side gear like a sole right like this Ooh. just like that see kind of like in there like that the way that I figure that these things are made, I gotta do some more research, is that this is made out of maybe a softer metal. And there's always a failure point built in or engineered into these things. You don't want this to fail. Well, the teeth, I guess they could shear off. That could happen. But uh, I don't see any crazy wear there. There is, well, I, I, I'm lying. I'm, you got me lying. Look at, can we get you guys inside of there? Yeah, you see that? It is ate up a little bit inside of there, so. See the other side? It's the same way. Mm, it's not bad. Like I don't feel anything bad inside of there. So I might end up replacing these these side side gears and these uh, fulcrum plates as well, because you can see these suckers. They they have definitely taken some uh, damage between themselves and the actual uh, drive shaft ends, the way they sit up against here. Ooh, that one's really bad. Look at that. That's crazy. So that'll definitely get getting replaced. So yeah, we're replacing these, and I'm gonna check and see. I don't think these are very expensive, 70, 80 bucks for a new set. So we'll probably get a new set of these as well. Good stuff, guys. I also have a calendar that I wanna give away to you, and uh, for that to happen, you gotta comment below. So if you've watched the video up to this point, thank you so much, you guys are awesome for hanging out for so long watching this video. And for two, for being a subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber yet, Hit the subscribe. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, guys. Comment below calendar if you want to be in the drawing for the VW calendar. I've shown it before, I think, on my social media. I'll put up a photo over here so you can see. And you may have noticed also that I've got a little bit of redecorating going on in here. That's right. I, I now have not just one big bad wreck. I've got two. This is really to help me get organized with the project. You can see I got all my turbo stuff up here. Intercooler, exhaust. Uh, that's just an old smoothie rim. <laughs> uh, my, my turbo header, the Berg fan, all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff. My oil cooler back over here. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today, guys. I got fuel system stuff to work on. And what are we gonna be talking about next week? Next week we're gonna be going into sensors, guys. We're gonna talk about all of the different sensors that are getting installed on Goose. All the EFI sensors. There's a bunch of stuff. So if you're interested in what you kind of need to make like a computer. An ECU, work on your car with your VW air-cooled engine. Tune in next week, guys, because we're going to cover all the sensors. And then after that, we're getting back into the fuel system because a lot's going on, guys. But until then, this is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'll see you guys on the next video.